Hi everybody, welcome to our Care Design Zone. My name is Ken and this is Julian from our field sales team. And then we're here to talk about network segmentation in the cloud and how Alcara CSX can help you accomplish that. So Julian, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, hi Ken. Thanks for having me on the session today. So as Ken mentioned, uh, I work with our customers out in the APAC region, so I'm based in Australia. Um, so I've got a lot of experience talking to customers around their networks, network requirements. And what I want to do is just sort of take you through, in the first instance, um, you know, the topic today is network segmentation. Take you through what are the use cases that we see from customers in the network segmentation space? Like, why do I want to do network segmentation in the first place? So I've got some of the key ones that come up from customers um, on the screen here. Uh, you know, the first one being line of business isolation. So we have a lot of customers that want to keep their different business entities um, separated for various different reasons to ease mergers and divestitures um, or you know to keep PL isolated and things like that. So that's a very common scenario we see. Uh, I'd say the next most common is really on the compliance front. So a lot of industries have different compliance requirements that they need to adhere to. And sometimes those, those compliance uh, requirements dictate strict isolation of, of entities. Uh, so some common ones that I think most people are familiar with are things like PCI DSS, so keeping payment cards information separate, uh, and HIPAA. Uh, now, uh, extranet use cases or business partner connectivity is another strong use case. Uh, as customers are moving more of their workloads into the cloud, they want to move their extranet environment into that cloud rather than on-prem. Uh, and so what Alkira offers is this method of providing this isolation in the cloud where those applications actually sit. Uh, and lastly, uh, a zero trust or lateral isolation use case where basically I just want to divide my network up to reduce the blast surface uh, or the blast area in case of a compromise. So if someone gets into one host, they can't laterally move into another host. So what I want to do now is take you through, well, what does segmentation actually look like uh, in the Alkira context? Now we can sort of group our segmentation uh, use cases into two broad buckets or tooling into two broad buckets. The first one being segments. Uh, now segments for us are layer three isolated uh, routing spaces. So these are akin to say a VRF light or an MPLS VPN. I can have overlapping address space, all that sort of stuff between these. Um, the next sort of container we have is something that we call groups, which are more of a micro segmentation use case um, uh, where I can basically group like entities uh, into this container and then apply policy as we move between these containers. So the way these things interact is essentially, uh, I will place my uh, resources. So the, the resources I wanna access, so IPsec sites, VPCs, uh, VNets into groups. I'll map those to segments and that'll allow me to maintain isolation and apply policy across the infrastructure. Yeah, Julian, so just to clarify for our audience that's actually watching the video, so those icons to the right are basically the different connector types that we have within the Alcara portal, right? So basically on-prem sites, SD-WAN sites, or even remote users, and then uh, the cloud icons are basically representing the different cloud networks. Yeah, that, that's right. So I've kept it a little abstract here just to emphasize the, the segments and the groups. But yeah, those icons are representing those connectors that you use on the Alkira topology. When I connect to AWS or I connect to my SD-WAN fabric, those are what those connectors are. Uh, those icons are representing. Got it. So there's also um, the apps group in this case that has two different segments inside of the apps group. So can you just you know explain again to the audience on what that actually means? Yeah, so this isn't allowing uh, communication between those. So even though uh, those uh, that corporate and partner segment are mapped to the same apps group or that same label, we're still maintaining isolation. What we've essentially done here is allow you to use common group namings across the different segments so that you don't have to come up with a new group naming space per segment. You know, I might have groups like prod or dev or apps and users, uh, and they may be applicable across the different segments uh, even where I'm still maintaining that inter-segment isolation. Got it. So basically groups in, in, in these use cases are like a tag that you assign to resources and then you build policy using those tags um, to basically easily build policies across multiple segments. 
Yeah, that, that's spot on. And I think the next slide, we sort of step through what does that look like from an Alkira policy construct. And Ken will go through um, this in a little bit more detail when we get into the demo piece. But just to give you a broad understanding, essentially when we want to define a policy in Alkira, the first thing we'll do is define which segment that we want this policy to apply to. And the next thing we'll be asked is which groups or connectors do we want to have as a source and destination? So in this case, I could say the segment is corporate. I want to affect traffic that's coming from my user group uh, and going to my apps group. Uh, and that would be what we call the scope of the policy. Uh, and the key thing here is I don't have to reference any specific IP subnets or constructs here. So it makes it very flexible as I add new connectors to groups that uh, they'll automatically pick up this policy without me having to define subnet ranges or prefix lists. Um, and then essentially what I do is I apply this policy, which is like an ordered set of rules that control how traffic can flow between those two groups uh, and either restrict or allow communication. Got it. So um, can you just kind of give us a couple use cases on what, you know, what typically customers use their care policy for? Yeah, and so that we can do a range of things with policy. Uh, in a broad sense, what we're doing is we're using it to say restrict east to west or north south traffic flow. Um, and that's through you know sets of permit and deny statements, kind of like a traditional access control list, uh, but with global application across the whole Alkira fabric. Okay. Um, and then the other thing we can do out of policy is also do services insertion. So where we might have a third party network service that we want to insert into the, to a flow, uh, we can define that within the policy and do that service insertion. Uh, but we'll, I think, Ken, you're going to cover that more in a, in a subsequent video. So we won't go into a lot of detail on that service insertion here. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the demonstration of the of the topology, and then also show you what it looks like in the Alkira portal. So here's the topology that we have um, discussed uh, actually in a previous video. So essentially, there are two segments that are presented here, one being the corp segment and the blue being the PCI segment. You have the three on-prem connectors on the left here uh, with DC1 and branch one essentially connected to the corporate segment. Um, and then the branch two assigned to the uh, PCI segment. And similarly, you have the cloud connectors on the right um, assigned to their respective uh, segment. So now let's walk you through uh, how that actually look like inside the Alkira portal. So here's the topology that we built ahead of time in the Alkira portal that exactly reflect what we uh, what we just showed on the previous slide. Um, so here you have the on-prem connector on the left here connected to the two different Alkira CXPs and then the cloud connectors on the right. So the purple lines basically rep represent the corporate segment and then the blue lines represent the PCI segment. And then the tags uh, were the group tags that are showing on each one of these connectors there. So you have branch one and branch two assigned with the users group, um, and then the cloud connectors and DC one assigned with the apps and payments group. I do wanna call out that there is a internet connector here that is assigned with the internet group here. Um, so that's uh, essentially how it shows up on the Alkira portal. And so I see here, so we can see both segments on the common topology here. Is there a way that I can filter this view? Like to say, I just want to see a single segment. Can I take a look at just that topology? Yeah, absolutely. So you can actually filter the topology by the segment. So now we're going to show the PCI segment and basically show you that there are two connectors, right? Actually connected to two different regions. Okay. And so I note that those those PCI connectors don't have access to the internet, right? Because we only had that internet connector in the corp segment. Yep, exactly. So now I'm actually going to use um, the clients that are sitting behind each of these connectors uh, for, for a demo here. So here are the uh, VNC clients essentially for each one of those clients sitting behind the connectors. So first, if we go to the branch one client, um, you can see that it's able to reach the AWS, the VPC just fine, which is assigned to the uh, corporate segment. Uh, but then this client with an IP address of 10.8.100.238, if I try to reach something in the PCI segment, which is the GCP 
connector with IP address of 172.16.200.3, you know, it's unable to uh, reach it. So conversely, now if I go to the branch two client and I try to reach the same GCP uh, server with 172.16.200.3, it's able to reach it just fine. And to show you that it's able to reach it, but if it tries to reach something in the AWS um, VPC, so 172.16.100.29, right? It's unable to reach it because that's in a completely different segment. Okay, so this is like there's a great example here of you know how we can provide that PCI segmentation, um, you know, that's really mandated by the standard inside cloud environments that that potentially don't even support segmentation natively, right? Yeah, so um, currently, I mean, as far as we, we know, um, there is no support for segmentation, native segmentation inside of either of any of these uh, cloud environments. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so next um, uh, we're going to kind of show you w how the configuration of groups work and how it works within the Alcura um, policy construct. So Julian will actually go ahead and, and take you guys through that. Yeah, thanks, Ken. So I just wanted to go a very simple example here. Um, uh, essentially, when we add an internet connector onto the Alcura portal, uh, by default, uh, just so we don't accidentally allow internet access, we by default block all access via that internet connector. And so what I want to do is just add a policy that allows this branch here that sits in users to access the internet that sits in this internet group. So I'm going to add a new policy. Uh, and what this is essentially going to do is mirror the example I showed you in the slides. And so I did that deliberately to sort of give you a context of how we visualize policy as we build it. So I'm going to add a policy here that's just allow users to internet. Uh, and then what it asked me to do is set the scope. And so, as I said earlier, we don't need to know the individual IP addresses or subnets that represent these sites because we have these groupings. I can essentially say, so I'm going to start by saying I want the policy to apply to the corp segment. Uh, but then what I can do is I can just simply select users and that's going to pick up all connectors that belong to users. Uh, so if we had multiple connectors in that segment belonging to users, they would all adopt this policy. And if I add additional connectors in the future, they'll automatically adopt this policy as well. Uh, and then I'm going to say to internet. And what that's going to do is select these two internet connectors here that I put in a group called internet uh, across the two CXPs. And so it starts to give you a feel for how this single policy entity can apply globally throughout my network. And the last element is just to add a rule list. Now I've just got two very simple rule lists here. One that says allow, which just permit everything. One that says deny, which is deny everything. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select the allow internet. And so now I have that policy constructed. It's globally applicable. If I add anything to those groups later, it'll automatically pick up that policy as we go through. Now I can visualize these policies once they're added. Uh, so I can just say view all policies. I can see a list of all these policies. Uh, this is the one I just created, allow users groups to internet. If I look at that, uh, we can see it visualized here on the screen. Now this is great for things like auditing policy in the future. You know, if I wanna see that my PCI segment's really isolated, that I've got security rules and those things applied, I can use this for an auditing purpose. Um, but I can also come through and look at the detail and we can see that simple allow any rule there. And now just to reference, this is overriding because it's got a more specific scope being users to internet. It's overriding this group, which is any to internet down here. And this is the default rule that's been inserted by uh, Alkira just to block internet access by default. And we can see here that uh, don't drop any here. And so Ken, do you just want to go show us how that impacts the, the access? Yeah, absolutely. Right before we do that, I just want to show that, you know, if you look at all the policies, actually, um, the allow apps group um, to internet policy is actually disabled, meaning that, you know, here DC1 is assigned to the apps group, um, but because this policy is dis disabled, it's not going to be able to reach the internet. So between here, the expected behavior we should see is that the branch one client will be able to reach the internet while DC1 client will not be able to. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. 
Okay, so now if I go to the branch one client and I just go to www.alkira.com, you can see that we can reach it just fine. And if I go to the DC one client um, and I try to go to google.com, actually just do the same thing and go to alkira.com, uh, it will spin and just to confirm the behavior I try to ping 8888, it will not be able to get there as expected, right? So uh, so essentially you have both resources in the same segment, but actually applied with different, very different policies in terms of their uh, internet breakout access. And this is how easy it was, right, to actually accomplish that. And you can actually apply this, you know, in various different use cases like Julian had discussed earlier in those slides. All right, so that's really all we want to cover today. So basically we discussed how um, Alkira can assist you with network segmentation in the cloud, um, how the segmentation actually works within Alkira CXPs, and then how you can use the, the group construct within um, Alkira to build policies, right, to enforce um, you know, security postures for both east-west uh, traffic as well as uh, north-south traffic. So Julian, um, I think uh, that's all we want to cover today, right? Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that, that's everything. Thanks, Ken, for having me on, and I uh, hope to join you in future episodes. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm.